The Great Rift Valley, part of a huge geological fault in East Africa. This fascinating deep scar in the Earth's crust that divides Kenya in a north-south direction extends for 9,000 kilometers. A wild and seemingly endless landscape. The fault is particularly famous for its soda, alkaline and freshwater lakes such as Lake Naivasha, located 100 kilometers from Nairobi. The splendid Lake Naivasha is the most elevated lake within the Great Rift Valley. The beautiful lakeland scenery is dominated by the impressive Mount Longonot volcano. As with many other lakes in the Great Rift Valley, with more than 400 bird species, Lake Naivasha is a true paradise among ornithologists. And the inhabitants of Nairobi have also discovered the delights of this remarkable area. The tranquility of the lake can be quite deceptive and the Maasai name of the lake, Eni Pusha, meaning back and forth, is an indication of how turbulent Naivasha can sometimes be. However, the lake is usually calm in the early part of the day. And at weekends, it's full of visitors from Nairobi. These waters have been fished for thousands of years. The water buffalo is indigenous to the region. They don't seem to be very impressed by the constant arrival of tourists at the lake. An abundance of fish has attracted large numbers of seabirds to Lake Naivasha. The size of the lake is determined by the region's annual rainfall. At the beginning of the 20th century, disaster struck when the lake completely dried out. But it's an entirely different scene today. The treetops are alive with birds and Naivasha has fully recovered. A little prematurely, and without taking the possible risks to the region's ecology into consideration, some attempted to cultivate the dried out lake for agricultural purposes. A 
As the lake water is too cold for crocodiles, the powerful hippopotamus is the undisputed ruler of the lake, which in years of heavy rainfall measures almost a thousand square kilometers. Highly skilled in the catching of fish, the pelican enjoys an endless supply of food here. It is the largest of Africa's birds of flight. Observing them in their natural surroundings is a truly captivating experience. With a wingspan of up to two and a half meters and a striking beak, a pelican prepares to land. The shores of the lake are lined by densely growing papyrus reeds and acacia forests. A friendly welcome awaits visitors to Crescent Island at the southern end of Lake Naivasha. This idyllic island is located on the edge of a submerged volcano crater. As there are no dangerous animals on the island, it can be explored at leisure. The volcanic soil on Crescent Island is ideal for various unique varieties of cactus. Despite its small dimensions of only a few square kilometers, the island's scenery is like that of a typical Kenyan savanna. Tall and thorny acacia trees cover the island including the yellow fever tree that grows close to the shoreline. Early settlers once associated the island's yellow acacia trees with yellow fever. The area is also famous for another reason. This section of the Great Rift Valley is known as the Cradle of Mankind. Recently, French paleontologists made an important discovery in a more northerly part of the Rift Valley, which established that man existed 1.5 million years earlier than previously believed. The introduction of tilapia and perch to Lake Naivasha followed much later. 
Both types of fish are the favorite prey of the largest concentration of osprey in the whole of Africa. These great raptors are the undisputed monarchs of the sky. In recent years, a privately owned wildlife reserve on Crescent Island has become well known for its amazing collection of wildlife. Nearly all of Africa's non-meat-eating animals are represented here. The giraffe is one of the most outstanding animals to be found here. They're popular with the nature reserve's daily visitors. Free from predators, the giraffes can enjoy a tasty meal in safety. The yellow and brown markings of each giraffe are unique. At six meters tall, the giraffe is able to feed at a height that is far beyond the reach of other herbivores. There are also large numbers of zebra and gnu on Crescent Island. The beautiful surroundings of this small reservation on Lake Naivasha leaves visitors with many colorful memories. The journey continues further north the next destination is known as one of the great natural wonders of the world and the most famous lake in the Great Rift Valley. Lake Nakuru is situated close to the equator and also close to the provincial capital of Nakuru and its 130,000 inhabitants. Kenya's Lake Nakuru is truly unique. Nature conservation has been a priority here for many years. In 1967, Nakuru became the first national park in Africa to exclusively protect bird life, although several other animals have also benefited from it. The national park not only contains the lake, but also the wonderful surroundings of Nakuru. Around 50 varieties of animal, some of which are extremely rare, inhabit the park. But it is the 400 species of bird that are be found in this area that makes it such a fascinating place. Lake Nakuru's main attraction is its flamingo population. Up to two million of these birds once lived here, 
and even today they've transformed the lake into a mass of dazzling colour. Cormorants, heron and pelican are among the most important birds on Lake Nakuru. They each survive on fish of which the lake has an abundant supply. Thus, the bird life here continues to flourish. The pelican catches fish by a tried and tested method. Each of its movements is carefully choreographed and eventually leads to a tasty meal. Unlike the heron, the pelican hunts for food in a group. It's not unusual to discover water buffalo on the banks of the lake. However, the strong odor of netron from the soda lake deters them from entering the water. The lake's fresh water is vital for the wildlife of the region. However, Lake Nakuru and its surroundings were recently spared the devastating effects of global warming. Some years ago, there was an ecological catastrophe when the lake completely dried out. Fortunately, nature recovered and its wildlife population has returned. Since 1969, the National Park has not only included the lake, but also the nearby hills and forests. The tall acacia forests south of the reservation are home to several varieties of monkey, such as the baboon and the rare colobus monkey. Baboons live in groups of between 20 and 100. They adhere to a strict hierarchy. At the top is a male followed by others of the same sex. The Nakuru National Park is an ideal place in which to observe wildlife. The lion, the most majestic of the Big Five animals, is also to be found here. Big Five dates back to the colonial period. It refers to the five wildest and most dangerous animals in Africa. The 
the eastern shores of Nakuru are famous for their unusual vegetation. This is the location of the only euphorbia tree forest in Kenya. It's also the most authentic euphorbia forest in Africa. However, close by, nature's more ruthless side is evident. Nature's darker side is typified by the vulture that survives by devouring the remains of dead animals. It has earned its somewhat ill-favored reputation due to the fact that it exploits the demise of others. There are eight species of vulture in Kenya. The powerful birds patiently await their prey. Surprisingly, they're actually quite fussy, examining it carefully and only selecting the freshest flesh. The leopard is another member of Africa's Big Five. They are also protected by the Lake Nakuru National Park. As the 188 square kilometer park is easily accessible, it's become an increasingly popular tourist destination. And nature conservation is also a priority in Lake Nakuru. A few years ago, several threatened net giraffes were resettled here. Since then, they've proliferated and they've now become yet another of the park's many attractions. Animals search for food throughout the day. They find some among the acacia trees. They slowly amble from tree to tree and nibble at tiny branches, leaves and buds, a favorite food of the graceful giraffe. The warthog is a somewhat less noble creature. Members of the wild boar family, these animals spend most of their time in search of food. They eat mainly roots and grass. Their powerful teeth protect them against the cheetah. The Nakuru National Park has received international recognition as an important rhinoceros reserve. In 1987, the park's black rhino were decimated by poachers. Only two of the herd survived. With the subsequent introduction of black rhino from another region, these mighty creatures have since proliferated in the now secure confines of the park. However, 
Whether the fascinating flora and fauna of Lake Nakuru will continue to thrive after the long periods of drought experienced here in recent times is another question. The journey continues north by car. This is the only practical way to travel as there are no buses or trains in this remote area. The crossing of the equator is yet another highlight of the journey. Located below the 600-meter-high Laikipia Escarpment, Lake Bogoria is the most spectacular lake of the Great Rift Valley. As with most lakes in this region, Lake Bogoria is alkaline due to its lack of outlets. Yet at the same time, it's paradise for the flamingo. Year after year, tens of thousands of these colorful birds can be seen here. They literally cover the lake, their mud nests being situated on the shoreline. They're an incredible sight. The famous explorer and geologist John Walter Gregory was also deeply impressed by this great spectacle of flamingos. The flock of birds is so large that they transform the lake into a pink carpet, full of activity and forever moving. The striking feathers of the pink flamingo are due to crabs and algae that are in great abundance in the salt water of Lake Bogoria. The sight of these beautiful birds is particularly breathtaking when they land on the water or fly up into the sky by the hundreds. Although massive numbers of flamingo populate Lake Baringo, it has been discovered that the population of this up to 1.4 meter high bird is gradually declining. reason is unknown. However, the flamingo continues to be one of the most spectacular sights in Africa. This soda lake was created by the influx of several streams, rivers and springs that flowed from various volcanic areas rich in minerals. This unique habitat was discovered by a European who was inspired to name the lake after the Bishop of Kampala. James Hannington came upon this enchanting lake in 1885. Lake Bogoria is still sometimes referred to as Lake Harrington and, unlike most other nature reserves in Kenya, is relatively untouched by tourism.
Until now, the region has been spared the mass tourism brought about by the popularity of the modern day safari, a fact that has benefited its wildlife. Visitors to this area appreciate the unique scenery of the Lake Bogoria Nature Reserve. And there's an abundance of tranquil and remote spots in which the animal kingdom, and particularly the flamingos, can be observed at close quarters. The long, narrow lake also has a history of volcanic activity. The Rift Valley owes its existence to two tectonic plates that during the continental drift gradually separated. Around 20 million years ago, the earth between the two plates descended several hundred meters, while other sections of it became elevated. Geysers on the western shores of the lake are a clear indication of the region's present-day volcanic activity. The gradual formation of the Great Rift Valley was also responsible for the development of the lakes. Close to the hot springs, the smell of sulphur becomes increasingly noticeable. Although fish cannot survive in this lake, its alkaline concentration is ideal for the algae that grows here. Because of its scenic beauty and solitude, Lake Bogoria is one of the most remarkable of all Kenya's national parks. Until a few years ago, it was only ornithologists who had visited this remote area of the Rift Valley. recent years, an increasing number of tourists have come here, although the annual number is thankfully still quite small. The steep slopes of the Laikipia escarpment surround the southern and eastern sides of Lake Bogoria. Hot steam from the geysers acts as a kind of soft focus for the captivating scenery. In some areas, fountain-like, several meters high geysers and hot springs transform the alkaline lake into a gigantic looking cooking pot. The 
the shoreline indicates that even this beautiful area has its more somber moments. The ground is covered with skeletons, mainly flamingos. The scalding fountains of hot water can be extremely dangerous. It's advisable to keep a safe distance from the unpredictable subterranean forces of nature and best to stick to the official paths. The Lake Bogoria National Reserve was inaugurated in 1970. Most visitors come here to see the park's 135 species of bird and especially the fascinating natural spectacle of its fascinating flamingos. The tall pink birds and their graceful movements are a truly enchanting and impressive sight. In addition to its huge flamingo population, the Lake Bogoria region is a particularly special part of Kenya's Great Rift Valley. Travelling only a few more kilometres north and surrounded by semi-desert, there is a far more highly developed and popular tourist attraction. Around 290 kilometres from Kenya's capital of Nairobi is Lake Baringo, the most northerly lake of the Great Rift Valley. Baringo differs from the region's other lakes in that it is a fresh water lake. Unexpectedly, and like a huge oasis amid the scant semi-desert, a lake suddenly appears, mesmerizing those who see it with its overwhelming splendor. Lake Baringo has long been known as an El Dorado among ornithologists from all over the world. It contains more species of bird than any other in the Great Rift Valley. But Lake Baringo also contains some extremely large and powerful creatures. The crocodile is common to its shores.
This, the sole surviving subspecies of the Saurian family, can grow as long as seven meters. In the water, they're well disguised and thus difficult to spot. Here, they're not particularly hostile due to the huge abundance of fish in the lake. The ancestors of today's crocodile lived more than 220 million years ago. But it was only in the 20th century that it became an endangered species. Freshwater lakes, such as Lake Baringo, are of great importance for the future survival of these primeval creatures. A boat trip is a good way to enjoy the lake's picturesque scenery. The reason for the brownish color of the water is the volcanic mud that is washed into the lake following heavy rainfall. Nevertheless, the lake is full of fish that attract several species of bird. In addition to the bird life that benefits from the large natural fish reserves in Lake Baringo, its population of reptiles has also taken full advantage of this great natural resource. Africa. At an average depth of only 8 meters, the 130 square kilometer lake is comparatively shallow. The lake's three small islands of Olkokwa, Teddy Bear and Gibraltar are important breeding areas for several rare and endangered species of bird. The scenery around Lake Baringo is dominated by the tall acacia trees that line its shores. Attracted to the lake by its huge numbers of fish and indigenous plants, osprey are particularly at home here. The lake was first discovered in 1893 by geologist John Walter Gregory. Until then, this area had been inhabited for thousands of years by its native population. The lake is still home to the Injemp tribe. Around 9,000 members of this tribe live here. Small canoes are the traditional means of transport for the Injep. The canoes are far more stable than they appear and goats and sheep are often transported from island to island. The Injep mainly exist from fishing because the harsh desert-like environment of the lake is mainly unsuitable for agriculture.
Thus, Lake Baringo is not only a vital source of nourishment for the animal kingdom, but also for its human population. In recent years, the lake has gradually developed into a popular tourist destination. There are several types of accommodation on offer that range from simple campsites to comfortable hotels. Feeding the osprey is one of the lake's main attractions. It's fascinating to observe these huge birds circling high above and then suddenly plunge earthward towards their prey. And it's possible to experience the osprey in less dramatic mood. Even though Lake Baringo and its surroundings have not been officially designated as a national park and are thus not protected, its scenery is extremely beautiful and for most parts untouched. The vastness of the lake and the infinite sky above is a truly unique and harmonious combination. It's not surprising that those who come here are enthralled by its natural splendor. For many, the lake has a magical quality. The lake has also been a mystery for a number of scientists since the discovery by a geologist named Gregory. At some points of the eastern shoreline, sulfurous water rises from the ground. However, the hot sulfurous springs do not seem to interfere with the quality of the water. At the end of the 19th century, various European explorers mistakenly believed that Baringo was once connected to Turkana Lake, but because of volcanic activity became more elevated and thus lost its natural outlets. Even the local Injem people, who unlike the Maasai and Samburu had abandoned their nomadic way of life, had no knowledge of any natural outlets for the waters of their lake. Scientists believe that the water drains away beneath the ground. Therefore, it is unlikely the Baringo will become an alkaline lake. The natural flow and ecological balance of the lake is thus assured. Lake Baringo is a natural paradise with over 450 different species of bird. It's one of the most important regions for ornithologists in the whole of Africa. The fascinating lakes of the Great Rift Valley are one of the most outstanding highlights of Kenya's landscape.
The huge 9,000 kilometer long fault in the Earth's crust is one of the most spectacular areas on the African continent. A truly unique natural wonder. <laughs> 